You probably recall the dramatic program entitled Lights Out. For the many of you who are loyal followers of that series, as well as for those of you who are hearing these memorable plays for the first time, NBC is presenting a limited number of the fantasies which comprise one category in the Lights Out repertoire. Willis Cooper, then of NBC Chicago staff, was the author. And tonight's play is the second in our cycle of revivals. And so it's Lights Out. Yes. What's that you're carrying? 
Morning, Adam. What? Oh, uh, I took some roses from the grave. Those red auric runners that you can't question. You knew she always loved them better than any other kind. Yes. Yeah. They're her flowers. She always had a bowl of auric runners in the living room, and they were at her bedside all the time. She was sick. And we'll put them in water when we get home. No, no, I don't think so, Battle. I think I want them to wither. I don't think I ever want to see red roses again blooming and happy. I don't think too much of her lying out there, lonely, afraid of the dark. Oh, Basil, I love her. Yes. Oh, it's old fellow. We know. They're very fresh now. Almost as if they have just been cut. Yes. Well, except this one. It's starting to wither too soon. I don't want it. I want them all to wither together. Did you throw that rose away, Adam? Yes, I didn't want it. You shouldn't have done that. I didn't want one rose of all of them to wither away and die before the other's time comes. No, Adam, but... What's the matter, Christian? I... Nothing. What's the matter? Adam, I hope you won't think I'm completely mad, hmm? My grandmother used to tell me of a superstition the old people had. What, Christian? Let's find out, Rose, shall we? Why? What, what are you talking about? What is the matter, Christian? Well, it's almost indecent to mention it now. But there's an old superstition that if you take a flower from a grave and then throw it away, the spot where you throw it will be haunted by the spirit of... She lies out there alone, afraid. I, I can't stand it, I tell you. Now, Adam, please, old fellow, you must move. Diane, Diane, my dearest, I'm lie down in the couch, Adam. Perhaps you can sleep a little. I'll leave you, shall I? I can't sleep, Adam. I can't with Diane. Oh, Diane, Diane, I can't live without you. I won't. I won't. I'll lie down, Adam, old boy. That's it. I'm sorry, fellows. I, I can't help it. We know. Oh, keeping you both awake when you stop work to do that. I'm ashamed of myself for what can I do? What, what can I do? I'll get a cup of coffee, sir. Huh? No, don't see that. Come down here a minute. No. Will you boys do something for me? Of course. Oh, really? oh, good friends. I... What do you want us to do, Adam? Will you go with me to that place where I threw away the road? Will you? Uh, I know it sounds mad, idiotic, but... If you want us to, Adam, Cora, I wonder if there could be any truth in it. None of us know, Adam. But there are folks who believe it. Yes, if it is true. You suppose I could? Can't be much farther by those old stone steps. Oh, yeah, the steps. Oh, if it could only be, if it could only be. We'll wait for you a little while, shall we? Yes, I afraid to be alone. We will stay with you, Adam. If she's here, she... She hears us. Yes. Diane. Diane. Do you really think Christian is you? Diane. Diane. Diane! Diane! 
They're coming again tonight. I'm going out. But Evelyn, dear. Don't Evelyn, dear, me. They've been coming to my house every Wednesday night since we were married, and I don't like them. I don't like them, I tell you. But Evelyn, they're my oldest and best friend. And I'm your wife. Oh. If you could spend a little time with me instead of sitting around talking all night long with a couple of women. Evelyn, please. I don't care. I won't have it. That's all. If you want to go, Evelyn. Well, I am going. That's all there is to it. If you will not sit around here and try to amuse myself and you and they... There they are now. I'm going. Evelyn, you can at least be civil to my friend. I've been civil enough to them for six years. Now, I'm not going to do it a minute longer. Go ahead. Have your good time. Don't worry about me. I'm going to enjoy myself. Well, how are you, Adam? Hello, Basil. Christian. Adam, how are you? Hi, boys. I seem to be tired all the time. Evelyn went out. She she wanted to see a movie, I think, or something. I hope you won't mind. No, not at all. No, of course not. Come on into the studio. Just put your coats wherever you like and sit down. Oh, thanks. You know, we always look forward to these Wednesday nights, Adam. We don't see enough of each other anymore. No, it's not like the old days when we spent all our time together. Sit down, Christian. There are cigars in the box there. Oh, thanks. You're looking a little done in, Adam. Been working too hard? No, uh, I suppose not. But it gets a little harder each time. I haven't the steady hand I used to have. Oh, no, that isn't true. Your hand is just as sure as it ever was. The looks of that landscape there, I'd say it was. Oh, I should say so. Well, interesting, Adam. Very interesting. You like it? Very much. It uh, looks rather familiar. I'm 
can't place it, though. Well, that's what I was thinking. You would remember it, perhaps. Yes. You remember those old stone steps? It's familiar. Yes, very familiar. I know. Where, Bardo? The... The cemetery road. Where I threw away an Ulrich Blunder Road one day. Seven years ago. I've been married six years. Six years? <laughs> that doesn't seem possible, Adam. No, oh, but it is. Is everything all right, Adam? Oh, yes. I've, I've not been very faithful to her. Well, you can't expect... No, but I promised once to death to us part. To death to us part. And I brought her back from the grave. Do you still believe that? For a long time, Christian, I didn't believe it. But now I, I wonder. It was a long time ago. Yes, a very long time ago. You never went back there again, Adam. No. Even the next day, I had to go west on that business connected with my uncle's death. I was gone for almost a year, you remember? Yes. And I came back, married to Evelyn. Adam, Christian and I are your oldest friends. Uh, why, why did you ever marry Evelyn? I've been asking myself that question for six years, Adam. I don't know. That was the fact that she made over me, flattered me, the great artist. That was because I was so lonely. It isn't too late. Too late? There are divorce courts. Yes, I suppose so, but... I gave her a promise. You gave Diane a promise. Yes. I broke that one. I shall not break another. I drove down the cemetery road this afternoon. The old stone steps are gone. Gone? Yes. They're building houses along there now. New houses for a new generation. The world changes. And men change, Basil. Have you changed, Adam? Really changed? Do you think I have? Christian, I thought you'd changed. Now I'm not so sure. You've not changed, Adam. No. No, I think I've not. Grown older, forgotten a little. That's all. We could drive out along the cemetery road, Adam. Hmm? The cars outside? Yes. No. No, I think not. I will be faithful in my own fashion... Until the time comes. And then? And then, my friend, I will still be faithful to the one I love. You're a strange man. Strange, no. Tell me that I will not break a second promise. But enough of this sadness. Well, it be, George. Come on, light your cigars, have a drink. Be merry, my friends, be merry. Tomorrow, we die.
can find something. I wouldn't ordinarily, but... I think I need one tonight. Oh, sir. Both do, I think. Diane. Diane. 
Oh, my love. I found you again. Oh. Oh, come back to me. For eternity now. Broadcasting Company.